Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, okay, so a uh, very interesting talk on Phil. Thank you very much, because this is one of the main issues that we are discussing. What is a supercontinent? I will give my opinions further in the, the talk. I hope I can do this in 30 minutes. So I guess that the main uh, goal of this meeting is actually to introduce our groups of research and then connect in between us, because 30 minutes is really very short time. But what I can show you uh, in these 30 minutes is this project that we've been working in the last decade uh, regarding the evolution of the Gondwana supercontinent. And in specifically for this talk, I chose a presentation I did uh, last October in Morocco in the Conjugate Margins Conference about the last two years we have been working in the, our group here in Rio de Janeiro with the tectonic uh, terrains of Gondwana and how do they control or not the rifting uh, that generated the South Atlantic. So this is something that a lot of people are already discussing, the alternation between origins and margins and margins to origins. So in the case right now, we, we are focusing on the other way around. So you can look here at the Alpine origin and then you can go from the margin pre-alpine collision to the uh, anatomy of the origin that is totally related to the anatomy of geometry of the previous continental margin. So what we do is the other way around. If you look at the continental margins of the South Atlantic, you will see that uh, some of the features, maybe the major ones, of course, it could be related to plumes as we were just listening, but some of them are related to the anatomy of the origins that predated the rifting. I mean, the amalgamation of the Gondwana supercontinent. So the best example nowadays is this African Valley. When you trace the, the faults, the structures, you can see certainly here the cratons, the pre uh, neoproterozoic cratons that of course, they control because they are different. They are thicker, uh, the lithosphere is thicker. And so this probably controls the flow in the asthenosphere, deviating from this nuclei. So it's very important, the inheritance. And we know that it's not just a structural importance, but also the petrology, what kind of mantle we have underneath the continental crust. So we know that the Lithospheric scale is one thing, the crystal scale is another, and the upper crystal scale, it's another thing. So we have different levels of scale to be analyzed, the inheritance of the continental crust on the rifting process. And why do we study the Brazilian rifted margins? So these are quite interesting subject to study. And one of these is the Santos Basin that you can see the map from Rigotti here from Petrobras. And fortunately, I cannot. Maybe you see my my uh, cursor here. My my anyway. Yes. So yeah. this is one of the most uh, complex uh, basins of the Atlantic, and you can see they have a resistant block, different thickness, as you can see in this cross section here, and uh, of course we have all these pre salt uh, oil uh, fields. And uh, this is a lot related to the inheritance. And I will talk a little bit about that later. So why we decided to study the South Atlantic margins, both in Africa and, uh, and in South America, because for me that I am originally a Precambrian geologist, it's key to understand the reconstruction of the Cambrian orogenic belts that are mostly uh, now submerged in the continental margins on investigation how Gondwana amalgamated as a supercontinent. Second, we have this terrain mosaic, which are very different te terrains. These are paleotectonic plates that probably control the evolution of the basins, the, all, all the rifting pro process and the final breakup in the scale of deformation of melting, I mean, magmatism, production of mag magmatism and sedimentation. And of course, it is very important, this kind of study, because we can actually work on better correlating the terrains offshore with the, the, the conjugate margin. 
and not only for prospecting resources that they, the oil industry needs, but also for the reconstruction models, because one of the most difficult reconstruction uh, area in Gondwana is the South Atlantic. So this is the, now I'm introducing our group here. In the last 10 years, more than 10 years, we are working in the building up the new Gondwana geological map. So this is a one to five million scale map. This is the last version. And uh, in the last five years, we're doing the reconstruction fit. Yeah, we did all the geology and all the reconstruction. And as you can see here, you have a very good fit in central Gondwana, Madagascar, Australia. This is really good fit. And the worst fit that we have been uh, working on the last two years is the South Atlantic, is where we have the major gap. And this is not a coincidence. This is related to the inheritance, to the plume that we had in the Paraná Basin, and to other subjects that I will uh, address here. So this is one of the main motivation. We have this gap here in the South Atlantic. Therefore, most of the Precambrian models that we built to discuss the amalgamation of Gondwana, they are kind of, uh, they have lots of uh, failures because we have a lot of origins that are actually underneath the water. Uh, another point I'd like to make here in the Gondwana map, just to, uh, talking a little bit about the question that Phil raised up uh, earlier. Uh, in our point of view, the Gondwana is a supercontinent, and uh, because not only because of the size, but because of the duration. So the Gondwana amalgamated at 500 million years ago, and it started to break up exactly here in the contact between Madagascar and Somalia at 183 million years ago. So it was a super mass for 350 million years. So this is already for me is the main argument to call it a supercontinent. And I also have a little bit of trouble with other scientists when they discuss Pangea. Pangea is actually just a moment in the Gondwana evolution. And after, and after this part of Gondwana, this, only this part collided with the northern continents. After this, when the rift is start here in Morocco, then Gondwana was again Gondwana, was always Gondwana, and then it started to break up in several parts due to the, the coming of a lot of plumes in different parts. So this is what we discussed that Gondwana is actually a supercontinent. Anyway, so this project is we've been working is about inheritance, is about reconstructing the continental lithosphere of Southwest Gondwana with all these tectonic terrains and to build up the evolution of this lithosphere from the Permian to the Cretaceous when we have the final breakup of the continent of the South Atlantic. So this is mostly methodology and I'll skip that, but I would just show a little, since I don't have the presentation mode, I cannot show all the the figures, but we are working with geophysics, uh, magnetometry, gravi gravimetric, bathymetric data, seismic, all the kind of data we can take from offshore to guess where these terrains go to. So what is the South Atlantic continental crust? It's a complex of mosaic of terrains from 500 million years ago. And these terrains are separated, some of them by suture zones that could be either from the Edecaran, which is related to the Pan-African and Brazilian orogenic belts, or even older sutures from the Eurozidian, which is one I will show later. So what we see in the South Atlantic is when we put the origins from both sides, they are younging towards the margins. So the youngest collision zone in the Pan-African Braziliano belts is actually a Cambrian or Dovitian, which outcrops here in east of Rio de Janeiro and Uruguay, and also the Damara belt that goes inside Namibia in Africa. So these tectonic terrains do not fit uh, only with onshore information. We need offshore information. And this is why we call the South Atlantic origin. So this is the complexity of the South Atlantic gap that we have on the continental crust. And what I will show here 
is the Ribera Santos example. So this is the largest gap we have in the South Atlantic, and it is exactly where we have one of the largest uh, sutures or the most important suture zones with two very contrasting terrains. This is a tectonic map. In blue, we have the Angola Kratom, which is older than the Mesoproterozoic, older than 1 billion years. In uh, darker blue, we have the continental margin, the paleocontinental margin of this Kratom that was involved in this red origins that we see here, which are the Brazilian Pan-African origins. So this contact we see here in Rio de Janeiro is actually a suture zone between the continental margin, paleocontinental margin, and the magmatic arc terrain. Using seismic data interpretation of the structure of this zone, and also some samples we got of shore with also this, uh, the age of this collision. So this suture zone, unfortunately, I can actually delete this. This future zone will go uh, offshore in these two parts, and it controls partially. This is where we have the drill core. This is the African part of the Angola Kratom. This is the model, and this is what we are testing in this project. This is the probably the, where we have this suture. It's a lithospheric suture zone, and this is the lithospheric reconstructed in Santos Basin. So what we are doing right now. We are modeling with analog modeling in Bern with Frank Swan. And actually, Frank is already now in Germany, but we are doing together with Frank and also with Guido Schroers uh, this modeling to test which would be the best suture, the best hypothesis for this suture zone during the rifting. So we are reproducing this as a rifting and analog modeling to test it. And after we have these structures being uh, generated, we will, this is the structural map of Santos Basin. This, we have all the structures, but they are, of course, they're classified here. We will test this suture with the rifting structures to test whether and how this controls or not these structures. This is another uh, paper is just coming out this year in the Martin DeWitt special volume. Uh, we mapped all the shear zones of high angle from both margins, and we are connecting them as piercing points. So this is going to be important structures that might be reactivated during the rifting. This is a, now it's a, just to show another thing we are working on. Uh, I'm not going to explain how to do a reconstruction because this is not the point, and most of you already know. But after doing all the reconstruction models for the South Atlantic, one of the very important uh, subjects we need to address is the intraplate deformation. And this is one of the models we generated four years ago, where we broke the South American plate along the Trans-Brazilian alignment, which is a major suture in the South American continental crust. But it never worked because we always got this huge gap here in the South Atlantic. So we are now working with the Bolivian Orocline in the Andes. And this is really new, we are trying to publish now. And this is actually where we broke the South American plate, uh, where we have a Cretaceous uh, fault with this magmatic uh, Etendec uh, Paraná uh, volcanic rocks. And after breaking, and making, reconstructing a new model with new poles and everything, we got the best fit in terms of how can we uh, match and make closer these two, uh, these orogenic belts, these shear zones and all we're talking about. So this is our new reconstruction model that we are still uh, working on the submission to publish this as a whole uh, model for the whole Gondwana continent. So, what I would like to leave here as a message is actually now that uh, uh, Phil just talked about the supercontinent, is that actually Gondwana was not an easy continent to break up. We needed at least three uh, plumes or at least three major uh, thermic anomalies in the mantle to break this continent because it was it lasted more than 300 million years. And 
we can see certainly that where we have magmatism and now they are finally trying, uh, they, with this, all these magmatisms from the Paraná basin here, we are connecting the source of the magma to the different tectonic plates we had in the Brazilian Pan African. So some of these orogenic terrains, they have very fertile mantles, subcontinental mantles, and you can trace them using the basalts, using the magmatic uh, provinces of the South Atlantic. And this is something that is already uh, going on in its work. So this is our group in Brazil. This is 10 years ago with uh, our uh, dearest Martin De Witt. He was there. He was the, the man that did the first Gondwana geological map. And um, today, actually, there is a tribute on him. His family organized a tribute uh, for him, a celebration. This is the map in another meeting. So we have a large group of students from undergraduate to postdocs working on this project. And now specifically on this subject that I'm talking about, which is the inheritance and how continents break up in previous sutures or terrain contexts or different mantles. Yes. Okay, Sorry about all these technical problems and thank you very much for- Thanks very much. Is there, we have time for a quick question. Sasha? Yeah, I have a quick question on the interplate deformation in South America. I, I like the way how you presented that this is the place where you have to look to get a full fit reconstruction because there has to be some interplate deformation. But if you look at the plate reconstructions of the past uh, 20 million years, everybody puts the share zones in different places. Um, what kind of evidence is really there to, to like solve this puzzle once and for all? Okay, do you see here in the map again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... We, we, we tried a lot using the trans Brasiliano that would be this major shear zone. The problem is that it, it's parallel to the South Atlantic. So it doesn't make a lot of uh, uh, help to close this gap. So this break that we generated here is on, we call the Torres Syncline, is where, uh, I, I will zoom in, is where Diet and Deca basalts meet uh, the basalts from Paraná Basin meet the Etendeca in Namibia, yeah? So this looks like actually it's a, a fault zone, an extensional, transtensional, we don't know, that we have this magmatism, mm -hmm. this lava coming in the Cretaceous. And another important thing is that when we finally break here, we can rotate this plate uh, anti-clockwise to close better here. And another thing that might help with this discussion that whether this works or not, is that the shear zones we have in Southern Brazil, they always correlate, people usually correlate with the ones in the Northern of this region, but they, are, they have opposite kinematic sense. Here they are sinistral, here they are destral. They are, so they don't, it doesn't make sense. So when we did the rotation, we start correlating the shear zones with Namibia which is much better for the Precambrian reconstruction. So this is a Cretaceous deformation zone. It has magmatism from the Cretaceous, it has deformation from the Cretaceous, and it matches with the, here, the opening here is a deformation from the Bolivian orocline. So for now, after a lot of discussion with the people from the Andes, Victor Ramos, Pangaro, we, we decided that that would be the best solution for the new Gondwana map. Of course, we need to investigate more, but this is the break that we suggest. It's gonna be orthogonal to the continental margin. Yeah, I don't know if I, if that was exactly what you were asking. <laughs> no, that was what I asked me. I should have known that was not a short question. I'm, I'm, out. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks very much, Renata. That was fascinating, thanks.